On the table today, we are checking out the Quetzal. The. The Quetzal. The Coatlas. The. The Quetzalcoatlus. Quetzalcoatlus. Might even close. On the table, though, we've got the Lego Quetzalcoatlus and the Mattel Quetzalcoatlus to go through and discover what they do, how they fly, what they are about, and how to avoid them when flying a plane, apparently. So lots to discover with these two. They're incredibly sized birdiezoars, and I think they're going to be a ton of fun to look at. As long as you don't fly like that. Look out! Oh my gosh, the Quetzalcoatlus is right behind you. Move! Move! Uh, oh! Whew. Squirrel Stampede! The Quetzalcoatlus Plain Ambush set number 76947 with 306 pieces with LEGO Jurassic World Dominion minifigures, Owen Grady, Claire Deering, and Kayla Watts. Just seeing this movie a few days ago, I actually enjoyed the new character Kayla Watts. And then of course, the Quetzalcoatlus here. Careful squirrels, it may steal your acorns. <laughs> and on the back of the box, what do we got? Plane versus Quetzalcoatlus. If you're a fan of Disney's Tailspin, you get kind of a nice looking sea duck in gray. But the Quetzalcoatlus is no sea duck. It is a giant birdie zor. About 16 feet in height when standing? What? 30 feet in width? Look how tiny that guy looks. Good thing I'm bigger than the guy. Inside the box, one reasonable set of instructions. Not too bad there, building a Quetzalcoatlus and a old school double prop sea duck looking airplane, which goes by the name the Midnight Oiler. There are the stickers. Then we have bag one. Bag two, and three, plus, I don't know why, this just makes me laugh. Wow, this is really long, this is terrific. And of course, the Quetzalcoatlus' wings. So much to build on this set. Let's see if we can find bag one, and where are we going to start with this? So we're going to start by building a Owen Lego mini figure. Wasn't Owen just back there on a motorcycle? He seemed to have disappeared, but we'll build another Owen mini figure. There's no shortage of this guy. Collected several years of Jurassic World, you're going to get Owens in many different kinds. Usually a pretty plain minifigure right now wearing his gray button-down shirt and jeans, so nothing too exciting with this minifigure yet. What's going to get exciting? is building the Quetzalcoatlus. Look at that. Look how long this is. That's bizarre. I didn't expect it to be this big. Often the birdie zores are just a little bit small. Why do I keep calling them birdie zores? I gotta stop that. I'm sure I'm angering several, several um, dinosaur prehistoric creaturologists. And the beak. Or the lower jaw. How do I get that out of here? So there's our parts i got to get a length on this. How long is the Quetzalcoatlus? Oh my goodness, we're at about eight and a half inches for the body length. And I imagine by adding the wings, we're going to have a pretty impressive wingspan too. How do these wings attach, do they? Well, let's start with the lower jaw. That's probably where we should begin. Yeah, that's not horribly terrifying yet. Very terrifying, actually. Oh, so for the wing pieces, we need to use these little hinge joints to add on to them, a little bionicle action in a way. And now we can post into our sides here. Making sure we have the appropriate wing side up, the graphic side up, I suppose. And another one. And where's our other hinge piece, posted hinge piece, with a little bit of lockiness for some uh, articulated movement. And there, on the screen, the Quetzalcoatlus, looking absolutely huge. What do we got for wingspan now? Wingspan is topping out at, oh wow, 11 and a half inches. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm going to have to dig up a normal pteranodon, pterodactyl. What is this? Anyone want to help me out with this one? Let's check it out here. Like about two to even almost three times larger than you typically see on flyers. 
So that's going to get quite terrifying as we build onto this plane. So Quetzalcoatlus, let's go take a few laps around the room. No, don't bite the camera lens. Goodness. Okay, so now we can start the construction of the Midnight Oiler. We'll build what the instructions say for bag one. Almost looks like a boat. Are we building a boat? The first setup must be a boat. There always seems to be either a plane or a helicopter or a boat in all these Jurassic World sets. But I don't mind this plane as much just because it has this like adventurous spirit to it. So that's kind of fun. A little bit adventurous. And there we have bag one construction. Yeah, I think we did just build a boat. We did, and uh, the pilot isn't here yet, so Owen's going to have to check out this boat. He's got a couple handle holders to fly this boat across the water's edge. Pretty good build so far, though pretty simplified. I think there'll be enough room for three minifigures up front and then some cargo in the back. A few extra pieces here already. So now we're gonna go into the bulk of the plane here. Bag two is really going to build up something cool. We've got Kayla and a lot of the wingage of this planage. Gotta get this plane in the air to fight the Quetzalcoatlus. Who is still just putting some damage on my camera lens today. So let's continue on the build with bag two. Okay, now we are more looking like the Midnight Oiler prop plane versus a boat. Pretty good build so far. Also, has a terrific wingspan. It's hey, Ketsy, fly in for a second. Place your wings down on that plane and see how big you are. Ah, there we go. So yeah, about the same wingspan for the Quetzalcoatl there. Not the length exactly, but we'll know more as we continue on. Thank you, Ketsy. It's kind of fun how they've merged these two together. Well, obviously, because of the movie. As for Kayla, not the best minifigure recreation. Maybe it's the hair. Well, yeah, it's all about the hair. That just doesn't feel like the hair that we've seen in the show. Although she does have highlights, so maybe that's what they're going. I imagine, whoa, there she goes. She is now angry about her hair. And her overall minifigure is a little bit plain. Not as decorative as you would want but still an important minifigure to have so much better than the constant Claire and Owens. Uh-oh, you okay back there, Claire? She might just be holding her breath back there. Okay, moving along to the last bag already. Bag three, we can rescue Claire from the swamp. We'll add on the tail section of the Midnight Oiler and just build some of the finer details. And after a few missteps in the build, I have constructed the Midnight Oiler. What a plane! A little bit stumpy, I think it could have been a little bit longer. It would have been nice had they increased the fuselage by an extra chunk and then stretched the wings. But I think when they're trying to keep these sets in certain piece counts, I can understand. It definitely has that rugged, beat up old plane feel. And it's looking like it can do a few entertaining things, so let's open up the cockpit here and get Kayla in her pilot seat. Now, unlike the movie, you can't have a co-pilot right next to her, but you can still fit two minifigures right behind her. So we can put Claire and Owen. He's become quite fond of that duck pole from the 90th anniversary set builds. And then replace back on the cockpit cover. 
So we have moving props and they can be removed for repair, which is kind of a fun feature, especially if you pay attention to while you're building and make sure to get this red clip facing up in the right direction. I had a little bit of uh, confusion with that. Finally got it done, so that's looking good. And then over on the back tail section, had this backwards too and figured that out finally. We've got landing gear on right now and they always stay on, but we have an opening hatch in the back and we can place in this little workstation here. It looks like we have a fire extinguisher, a wrench, and a flashlight, and that will just slide in like so, and you can close it back up. One other feature maybe some people might be asking who have seen the movie, slight spoiler here. This probably is already in the trailers though. At one point in the movie, there is a daring chase of a squirrel on a motorcycle, if I remember right, and the plane is about to take off, and will the squirrel on the motorcycle make it into the plane? Um, yeah, I think you can place a motorcycle in the back there, not that the motorcycle really stays in the plane, but it was interesting to see if it can equip the motorcycle, and then we can close up our doors, like so. So you can carry a motorcycle. Kinda wish there was a motorcycle included with this build. If you need the cycle, you've got to check out. That's a beautiful noise. You've got to check out. It's the market set, I believe, right? Is that the one where Owen has the bike? With the Atrosa Raptors, check out that build for the bike. There might even be another opportunity for the bike. I'm getting a little confused, but Overall, great little fun build of the plane, the Midnight Oiler, and our Quetzal. Where'd our Quetzal go? Oh, there it is. Can you please stop biting my lens? Goodness, so there's our Quetzal Glatilis, and you can see pretty much scaled right to the size of this plane. I can totally see it being an air defense deterrent. Look at that. It is just right on there in size and scale, making, making the set, really. Half of the dinosaur in the set here makes the set. It's not a dinosaur, it's probably like a birdie or like I've been trying to say. Someone help me in the comments what this would be classed as. A dino pelican. A stretched dino pelican. That's what it was. A stretched dino pelican. But it's a pretty fun build and now we can kind of compare our Quetzal with the other Quetzal from Mattel. Okay, so here is the Mattel Quetzalcoatlus doing its best trying to fly out of this Jurassic World Dominion box. Massive action. So we've got a button on back that should probably give us some bird flight. Might be a little difficult in packaging still. Over on the back, total wing flapping action, chomp, and a scan to unlock code. We'll have to test that out too. Pretty large scale, but will also play well with the plane, right? So we're moving from package. You okay, Quetzal? So out of package there, it is a little trickier than normal dinosaurs to stand, right? Another very nicely detailed item from Jurassic World. I'm still trying to figure out the best way of a term to describe these flyers. On the back, a button to flap. Wow, look at that wingspan. What do we have for a uh, wingspan, by the way? We're looking at more than 16 inches and a length of about 12 inches, so a really large beast. And highly detailed with a gray body, uh, brown wings that uh, transition into a lighter tan there with a little bit of a scaliness to it. A very highly painted headpiece with some orange around the eye and beak, and a little bit of blue on this crest. How do we get the Quetzal to open its mouth? There's another button on the base here. What is the base? Oh, there we go. On the bottom, you can open the the beak, <laughs> the beak of this mighty beast. And the head has articulation on the neck there. There is a great post and pivot point to rotate along with these wings that tuck in and the legs. Oh, I would love to see Mattel tackle how to train your dragon. Uh, that probably would never happen, but man, they do some great job with the overall articulation of these guys. <laughs> these legs are looking quite funny. Maybe we can kind of stand her up now because of that. So not bad, she's, she's pretty fun, uh, pretty fun large toy. So how do we find our scan code here on the back? Oh, this one's more of a flip up on the back. So let me go get the app going. And here's our Jurassic World Dominion app. And thank you everyone for letting me know that my old collection still exists. Last time I did not go all the way down to the bottom or maybe just did not notice. Uh, here's some of the newer dinosaurs we've collected from Dominion. But right here, previous collections, I had noted that you couldn't find them, and there they are, the quizzes, 
um, all the uh, great dinosaurs we've collected from the various lines, like Dino Escape is still there, and a Camp Cretaceous, of course. All of these great scan codes. Primal Attack is still there to show what you've collected. This is such a handy app. I love how they've included this. Uh, I can I can see how they had to kind of revamp a little bit for Dominion, and so that's kind of what happened. Um, and so there you there you go. There's all the quizzes and everything. So super excited that still exists. Let's give Quetzal here a scan and see what we can learn about this one or what it looks like. And there she is. Whoa. She's so big, like the length of her head and wings just go all off screen with this one. It's quite crazy. I wish there was a roar feature. There used to be a roar feature. Maybe if you just tap the screen is what it does. Get a little bit of a roar there. So what do we know here, if I can get it going? There we go. Okay, so there we go. There's a size scale of the Quetzal next to the guy there. He's just like, oh my, I'm going to go back in my airplane. Diet of meat, only the weight of one pig. Interesting, I would have assumed maybe two or three pigs. So fun with the Quetzalcoatlus. Very interesting bird. I'm learning the word. Not sure if I'm saying it completely right, but I'm getting there. So yeah, a quick combination comparison of this one here with the Lego. The Lego Quetzal here. The Lego feels a little more pelican-y with this white color. Uh, feels like a pelican and the bright orange beak. They're almost, almost close in scale though, really. Just a little bit larger for the Mattel version. So this is a great like double thing you, if you're a super fan of the Quetzal and airplanes and attack. This one here works well with this plane too. It's about scaled right, maybe just a little bit too large in this situation, but maybe a little more fun and terrifying if that's what you're going for. So pretty awesome. Pretty awesome to open this one and, and discover it. So that's pretty fun with the Quetzalcoatlusi. Quetzalcoatlusus. I'm not sure. Am I even getting Quetzalcoatlus right? Great word to say, just really challenging. If you like today's video, please give us a squike, a squirrelibe, and a squamit. What is your favorite part of the Quetzalcoatlus? Or the build, or the set, or the code, all that fun. Thank you so much for watching. That's what I have to say about that.